We're good. Let's pick up the med packs. Oh, there's more of them. Great comes barreling into the room. Her weapon drawn, the heavy ballistic plates on her, of her uniform make her look more mechanical than organic. An impression magnified by the coldness of her voice. That was quite a feat, taking down those spider drones. She pulls back the slide on her weapon. Don't get your hose off, though. Your skills won't be enough to save you. You sure about that? We've taken down everything you've thrown at us. Hell, you worked for Joe Tang. Oh, you know what we went up against in the World City. Your performance in the World City was impressive. I'll give you that. But I've still got you outgunned. Gestures with the barrel of a weapon. May be good, but you're not invincible. All it takes is one well-placed bullet. Glad to hear you feel that way. I was afraid you'd surrender before I got the chance to make you pay for what you did to Nightjar. Jar. Who? Alright, the collateral damage from the ambush. That was just business. If your friend didn't want to get shot, you shouldn't have gotten in the way. Hey, you can't win this, win this great. Oh, before we get into this, this is probably something you should know. Make it quick. I'm not getting paid by the hour, and I don't like delaying the inevitable. Um... Uh, Aris is gonna stab you in the back after they make the move. Because I did learn... We don't have it here, but... We did learn that they are gonna, like, liquidate her. The eyes narrow. That's quite a claim. Can you prove it? See for yourself. She studies the pages of scrolling text that you push to her PDA. A brow furrows as she reads. She, finally, she looks back up the, at you. Thank you for showing me this, but it doesn't change anything. For the time being, I'm on Aris's payroll. I'm gonna have to revisit our arrangements before they make their move, but that doesn't change what I have to do today. Oh, she's so dumb. I'm giving you a chance to walk away. You think that Aris is gonna give you the same chance? Probably not. But they don't know that I'm aware of what they're planning. That gives me an edge. One that will disappear if I tip my hand too early. Well, this is just a job for you. Yeah, and? You get some kind of point you're trying to make, Shadowrunner? Oh, you can walk away from this if you want to. I don't need ideological reasons to do my job. I just do what I'm paid for, no questions asked. Sounds familiar? Shadowrunner? It should. We're not that different, you and I. Intelligence? I don't have six intelligence! Why do you tell me I have six intelligence if I don't? I have three! Now, granted, Isabel has six, Rakta has eight. So maybe it's using that, but... Well, this... This shouldn't be available to me. Aris is all about money, too. We just trashed about a million new yen in spider drones. Who do you think they're gonna blame for that? A frown overtakes her face. Behind it, you can see a brief flash of worry. Point taken. But I'll smooth things over. I always do. Hey, you can always walk away from this. There's no need for any more bloodshed. There's a long pause. Finally, create acquaintances. Acquiesces. We're gonna know. Alright, this. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. On the count of three, I'm going to tell my men to lower their weapons, and there... We are going to walk out of here calmly and peacefully. You take the warehouse, and we disappear. Deal! He nods, then taps in the code sequence on her PDA. We're out of here. Pleasure doing business. Oh, and you should know, it was never anything personal, Fist. I was just carrying out my client's wishes. First Joe Tsang's, then Aris's, same as you do every day. Hey, just get the hell out of here. Don't worry. It turns. Go, I won't. Now, Gobert and uh, Isabel are probably gonna be slightly unhappy. Because... Can I not pick this up? Thank you. Why didn't she leave yet? So 
annoying. Okay, whatever. Oh, I got wood. Oh, okay, I'm fine. Um. Oh. It, it, we're doing an action right now. Hence, save during NPC turn. Oh, she got bugs out. Oh no. Oh no. What is this now? Oh. Did I quick save after the big fight? This doesn't matter because because it's the same text. It, it, we didn't change location when we went into the warehouse. Did I quick save right after? Okay. Gonna do the same thing. Deal. Go do business. So let's let's just wait for everyone to leave. Is the game just totally bugged? I mean, let me just check, because if, if she's bugged... Oh, we can do this. Okay. Oh, that's not that's not what happened. I, I thought I could do like apparently there's a cheat code thing. It's still combat is still happening right now. Let's let's see if we can open up the console and and turn. Control F1. Okay. Command and end turn. No? So I can... As long as my character is moving, fine. Uh, 
Okay, this is annoying. Okay. Can we just... Can we just... Uh... How do we kill someone? Um... Okay, I guess we, we probably have to fight her then. It's annoying. Yeah, some stuff is happening. Like, the game is really, uh, not feeling it. Okay, uh, let me, let me just do this. Because the game is really not feeling it. Don't know why. Uh, let's turn the game off. And let's turn it on again. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Stuff's not spawning. Oh. And let's do the same thing we did before. Nothing's working. So, uh... Well, this is not nice. This is not good. Not good at all. Oh, this really sucks. I don't know why this happened.
But this is not something I like. Dude, stuff is happening right now. I think... I think I... I know what happened. I think I killed them too fast. They were supposed to come quicker. So I think what I have to do is I, I actually think I have to fight them. I'm going to try to fight them then. This is not something I like. Let's try to spawn her though. I just attack. Bring it. With some strange neutral turns. Uh. I decided to use a cheat, not because. Not because of anything else, except the fact that I just had to. I was able to do this non-lethally, but the game didn't let me. Probably because of those two neutral turns. I don't know why that happened. Your PDA buzzes. The tone is instantly familiar. Timely Cheng is on the line. Pick up. Hello, dear. Just roll something the color of overripe plums from a rock glass. I take it you've secured the Aris facility in Taipo? Uh, you are? Yes, Auntie Cheng. Then tell me, what are they doing there? What is being stored in that warehouse? It's an armory. Aris is preparing to take over the HKPF. Ah, I see. There's a long pause. Kami looks down into her drink, contemplative look on her face. Finally, she raises it and takes another sip. And sets it down on a nearby table. I know that Chu was off has offered to restore your sin. Make a calm call to Mitsuhama Corporate. And you get your old life back. I have a counter proposal for you. Uh, of course you do, Auntie. Um, I'd expect nothing less. Don't turn the warehouse over to anybody. Burn the fucker down. You do this for me, and you'll be set with the yellow lotus for life. Every privilege that you can imagine. Every extravagance. However rare or expensive, it will all be yours for the asking. All for the price of some gasoline and a match. Wait, burn it? Why? During that, turning that facility over to Mitsuhama won't stop Aris. It'll force their hand, push them into attempting an immediate takeover of the HKPM. The end result is likely to be long and bloody, and Mitsuhama will lose in the end anyway. If Aris Macro Technology is set on taking over the Hong Kong police force, nothing will stop them. They have the resources to succeed in the end, no matter how desperately Mitsuhama attempts to resist. Why not just do this, though? Use your head, dear. On the Mitsuhama, the HKPF was content to leave well enough alone when it came to the tribes and territories. Uh, they knew which neighborhoods were theirs and which were ours, and they did us the courtesy of keeping their noses out of our business. But if Aris were to take over, when Aris takes over, they could, that could all change. They'll likely make a priority of replacing us with an organization that they've already got their po in their pocket. With 44 knives, perhaps, or the Red Dragon Syndicate, the Yellow Lotus would not survive such a change. The old woman inspects her glass again, dipping a pinky down to tap at the bowl of ice. Flows in the center of her drink, it spins away from her finger closes her eyes with a sigh. What happens with Chu? 
Her eyes snap back open. The placid expression on her face is washed away by a wave of irritation. I was having a moment, dear. You really need to learn where to keep your mouth shut. As for you, why would I give a fuck? As soon as you bur burn the warehouse, she'll become irrelevant anyway. You have an indig indig indignation. Then her face seems to brighten. I'll tell you what. Here's a faithful senior inspector Chu that you think will make me happy. Surprise me. Okay. She raises her glass to the strain and her voice goes cold. You've heard my offer fist. And you know what I'm willing to pay. I pray that you make the right decision for all of our sakes. Finally, Cheng's image flickers on your PDA screen and winks out of existence. The call has been terminated. I'm gonna li let her live. There's no reason for me to kill her. She's gonna be upset. Quite, probably quite a bit. But that's okay. Chu struggles to lift herself into a kneeling position as you approach. She looks up at you with red rimmed, horribly bloodshot eyes. Veins in her temples, temples are still throbbing, and you can see red crescents where her nails have bitten into the palms of her hands. This is great. Yeah, she's been taken care of. Closes her eyes. Good. That's, that's really good. Now reach into my pocket and grab my PDA. Keep it. I'm afraid there's been a change of plans. Change? What? I'll get you to safety, but we're burning this place down. Sorry. Expression clouds. Chang's orders. My decision, but I'm doing it for her, yes. She closes her eyes. I'm too weak to stop you. But what are you going to do? Enjoy your life in the shadows, Fist. Just sacrifice your one and only chance to get out. That's fine. Blowing clouds of choking smoke fill the sky, stinging your eyes and clogging your nostrils. The fire that you set is doing its work nicely. Flames gout from the warehouse's windows, bathing you in waves of near unbearable heat. Things are already going up, huh? The face glows yellow orange in the flickering light. Auntie Cheng should be pleased. Gun show sure as hell won't be. I promise you that. When he finds out that you turned down Shu's offer, he's gonna be livid. I know, but I don't have much choice in the matter. I don't want my sin, and I don't want to see an end to this team. The comlink buzzes again. Captain Jomo's face winks onto the screen. Ahoy, my friends! You have finished with the warehouse. That much is plain as day. Jomo can see the flames from where he stands. It is probably best that we get a move on, la? We don't want to be here when the owners of that warehouse come a-calling. Are you taking us back to the Bentang? Yes, my friend, and from there directly onto the Kraken. Kindly Cheng has informed me that big changes are afoot within her organization, and that we should prepare ourselves for a lengthy voyage aboard your fine ship. Um, Jomo, the Kraken isn't seaworthy. She's like a sieve with a rudder. Not anymore. Utama's men have been working tirelessly to repay her in your absence. Repair her. She isn't ready to set sail yet, but soon enough, she'll be perfectly capable of crossing the Pacific unaided. Crossing the Pacific? Joma, where are we going? To the new home of a yellow lotus, beautiful girl. His smile gleams. Come now. We must go, but trust Jomo. All will be made clear in time. Okay. Epilogue. The fire reeved warehouse burns at your back. The last of Aris and its legacy, soon to be nothing but a mound of embers. You return to Jomo and the drunken mistake. The pirate revs his engine and tears out of the harbour ahead of the medvac transport you called in for Chu. Though thoughts vibrate within your skull, you know the inspector will live, but your opportunity to flee back to your old life has now left the table. Gone from the moment you torched the warehouse. You hear Jomo's voice cut through the howling wind. He says Duncan left. Word travels fast in the shadows, and he's finished with you. So, he's gone too. The drunken mistake speeds away from the Taipo harbour. Carrying your back, there was the Benteng. It seems kindly Chang was right. You and your team have a long sea voyage ahead of you. 
Kraken motors along, cutting through the choppy waves of the South, South China Sea. The coarse sound of Captain Jomo's voice echoes down from the wheelhouse. He's singing a crude Indonesian sea shanty, and in between verses he barks with laughter. Well, he seems to be enjoying himself. Well, if the singing helps him enjoy to pilot this wreck, I'm all for it. I don't know, I kind of like it. It's a tunnel, and I can't understand the lyrics, but I can hear that he's happy. He sounds like a leopard seal with a sinus infection. Leopard. Aren't you shakes his head? Sometimes, this acute hearing of mine is a curse. Sixteen days of this will be challenging to endure. It would drive Duncan crazy if he were, if he were here. Robert snorts and shrugs languidly. I hear you, Seattle. But this is how it had to happen. This is the life that you chose for yourself. You're good at it, and you like it. Duncan doesn't. But what did you expect him to do? Isabel shakes her head, sighing. Don't blame yourself, blame yourself Fist. You're cut out of for this life, and he isn't. And the inverse is true. He had a normal life. You never did. What were you gonna do? Be a clerk in a stuffer shack? Sell tasers at Weapons World? Yeah, I can't really see it. Look to the future, not the past. That's how you progress into a better position in life. So tell me, my friend, what do you intend to do when you arrive in Seattle? Oh, Seattle. Yeah, we're gonna go to Red Big Rhino to eat. The big orcish drinking hall? Oh, we've, we've heard about that place even in Hong Kong. A narrow fried chicken, racks of barbecued ribs bigger than your torso. I am so there, Seattle. After that, we should definitely make contact with the Yellow Lotus members in Seattle. Once we have been introduced to them, we can start ensconcing ourselves into the Seattle underworld, and that, in turn, will lead to safety. I don't know about either of you, but I've got a pretty good feeling about this. What do you think, Seattle? You ready to show us the sights of a UCAS? And get into a whole set of new troubles? Because if you ask me, I think that we're going to have an interesting life no matter where we wind up. Isabel walks over to the nearby table and grabs a bottle of Joma's Baiju off of it. I'll drink to that. To the future, right? Whatever it might be. She pulls the cork out of her with her teeth and takes a long drink. Tosses it to you when she's done. To friends and family, because they're all we've got. All we've got. Well, I don't have family. Because Duncan is not my real brother and Raymond is dead. The Baija burns like a slug of old kerosene and engine grease going down. With the faintest aftertaste of copper wiring and an old shoe leather. Not the worst liquor that jumma has got, but not by a long shot. Gobba laughs, drawing back her head. That's the spirit. No matter what happens when we make landfall, we'll be ready for it. Come hell or high water, we're the survivors. Come on, just that out over here. As you settle in for another day on the long trip to see you too. You feel a sense of calm wash over you. Gomas rough are arias intermingle with the sounds of the wind and waves. Blending into white noise, it's a strangely comforting sound. At the aft of the room at the aft end of the room, a wide porthole gives you a view of the open ocean. The sky outside is so brilliant as to be almost blinding. Squinting at the light, you let your eyes close. For now at least, the horizon seems clear. C2 feels strange after so much time away. It feels like home. It still feels like home, but it's curiously foreign at the same time. But with kindly Cheng and your crew on your side, you rapidly make it feel like you never left Hong Kong. Kindly introduce you to Zheng Li Kuan, C2 Mountain Master of the Yellow Lotus, and through him you find both work and safety. With your help, the Yellow Lotus, the Yellow Lotus rapidly expands its influence in the Puyallup. Barons. Business booms in 2058, when Don James the Hammer O'Malley is assassinated, kicking off a gangland war that affords the Yellow Lotus rapid gains in both influence and territory. Through your own skill and Kaimi Cheng's trademark ruthlessness, your team steadily carves out a large chunk of Seattle Metroplex for the Triad. This expansion continues until the Renraku Archaeology. The Renraku Archaeology inexplicably seals itself off from the outside world, trapping its 100,000 residents inside. 
UCAS military cordon st the structure of casting a pole over the metroplex. In response, the Yellow Lotus wisely chooses to slow their expansion, the better to remain off the military's radar. The world turns, seasons change, and life moves on. In the following months, Addis Macro Technology takes over the contract for the HKPF from Mitsuhama. The Tolu Harbor complex is completed and a new heavily militarized police force walks the streets of Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, the feud between the Red Dragon Association and the Yellow Lotus erupts into a full-scale gang war in the early 2060s. The Red Dragons prevail in the conflict and the Hong Kong branch of the Yellow Lotus is completely annihilated. Riot's traditions live on in the Seattle Metroplex. Under the stewardship of Zheng Li Kuan and Kang Li Cheng, Duncan's fate is forever a mystery to you. If he lives, you never hear from him again. You and your team remain as tightly knit as ever. Together, you look for the future and the... And there's something. I can scroll. And it, it feels bad. And the end.